Average Hockey Fan here once again, and brutal loss to the New Jersey Devils tonight. I wouldn't even call this the New Jersey Devils. This is more like the New Jersey Devils B team, their exhibition squad. Uh, Miles Wood got hurt in the first period. They had a bunch of players out. Marcus Johansson got traded today. They didn't have Keith Kincaid in net. They put Corey Schneider in net. A goalie that has struggled all years and had multiple surgeries. People have been saying his career is probably over. And somehow tonight he absolutely shows up as a 970 save percentage against Montreal and is a really good late in the game. It looks great, and it, it it's pretty much another inexcusable loss for the Habs. It's a story of too little, too late. They figured they could play lackadaisical the first two periods. Second period, they were okay. They really came out in the third, but they couldn't generate any quality attempts. They didn't seem to be much fight to them tonight. The only positives I'm taking out of this game whatsoever was Price looked good at the end of the game, and Drew Ann looked good in this game. For all the games Drew Ann didn't show up, people can't say he didn't show up in this game. He pressed hard in this game. He had a nice couple, nice entries in his own, couple nice shots, set up a few nice passes, he made a couple bonehead plays on first power play where he put, uh, he tried to pass it in, lazy pass, turned it over, but other than that he showed up this game, he just couldn't produce anything for the team, he drew two penalties himself, the power play was abysmal once again, the penalty kill was excellent, I suppose Habs can take, Habs fans can take that out of this, this was a game they needed to win, with only 20 games less, and Carolina right behind them, Pittsburgh tied up with them pretty much points was. Uh, they could not afford to lose this game, and they lost it. They didn't even get an overtime point out of it, and I don't understand how they lost to this team, because New Jersey had at least five or six of the roster players off the team, the regular roster players, not including guys that got traded, other guys that just weren't in the lineup, guys that were hurt. They had no Taylor Hall. Uh, the, at the, at the announcers, commentators were making this sound like it was going to be a gimme, the way they're talking about it at first. They were like, this is like an exhibition team the Habs are playing and I was all excited but they really were so flat in the first period they had 11 shots and out of those 11 shots I might have seen one quality scoring attempt one quality scoring attempt that's it and nothing else uh, it was a brutal game all around for the Habs it's an inexcusable loss and I'm really hoping this isn't a trend for the season if they lose tomorrow against another non-playoff team in Detroit we're really going to see that MB made a big mistake by not even adding a little bit on the defense. Uh, he should have added some defense. The defense wasn't good enough in this game to allow New Jersey to have two goals like that. Weber made a blunder on the first goal where he should have covered the defenseman and the defenseman, or not the defenseman, he should have covered the forward. He should have had the body. He let him stand in front of Price. He let him get the tip right. No goalie is stopping that. He let him get the tip. I'll talk about it in a second. And it's just, as a Habs fan, it's disgusting. I'm tired. I'm sick of it. To, to lose four in a row, Win two, make it look like they're going to come back, get a couple points, build up a bit of lead, keep that walk out spot, and then lose two in a row again at this time of the year with 20 games left. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. And some of the coaching decisions are inexcusable too. Some of the line matches that they did, some of the way they switched it up in the game to guys that just weren't gelling together, it made no sense to me. The one decision I did like is when they put Paul Byron out there with Domi. Uh... The shots were 35. The face-off percentage was 50.3% for Montreal. The uh, power plays for Montreal were 0 for 4. They had 4 power plays. They generated 0 power play goals once again. They had to drop to 31st after this, after generating 0 on 4. They were already 30th in the league. They, I would assume they are going to drop to 31st after this. Their penalty kill was solid, mainly because New Jersey's power play sucked tonight. 5 for 5 on the penalty kill. Price was 900 save percentage, stopped 20 of 22 shots. New Jersey was good for the first period, and after that, they did look like an exhibition team. They didn't do nothing after the first period. If they had a, a goal that I don't even, uh, that was probably their only scoring chance of the whole period, if you ask me, because the second period, Montreal did play good. They just couldn't generate quality scoring chances. They were coming into the zone good. They were making too many fancy passes. The power play was driving me crazy. If I had enough here, I would have pulled it out of my head because they were just making fancy pass after fancy pass. Shaw came down on pretty much a breakaway. He had enough room to get a nice shot off right in front of Schneider, and he decided to pass a lazy backhand, which got picked off again. And they just kept making pass after pass. Riley couldn't seem to get the one-timer right on the uh, power play. It's just Drew Ann was the only guy who looked good on the power play to midnight, and that's saying something. Uh, as for New Jersey, they only had 22 shots, and 10 of them came in the first period. So after that, if you average it out, I believe in the third period, they only had like three or four shots. Uh, their face-off percentage was 49.7, they were 0 for 5 on their power play, of course, and they were 4 for 4 on their penalty kill, of course, and Schneider had a 970 save percentage, so 
he looked like a goalie resurrected. And like, I don't know how these weaker goalies come into Montreal and do this, but it always seems like they're going up, if they're going up a goalie that seems like a gimme, they just seem to stand in their head whether or not they lose. They always seem to play good against Montreal. He stopped 34 of 35 shots. And the last period, they did have some really good quality chances. The power plays they had in the last period looked good. Sure, the power plays looked good third. They couldn't capitalize on it all. And that's what counts. You're not going to even make the playoffs with no special teams. They pretty much have no special teams offensively right now. They had no power play. They're, I think, one for their last 22 attempts on the power play. That is unexcusable. They have one goal in their last five or six games on the power play. Uh, Kak and Yanni, what didn't play well tonight, I didn't like what I seen from him. Lekin had a couple nice plays in the first period. Oh, no, I didn't like what I seen from him. That line didn't look good to me. Uh, just all around bad game. The one line that did look good to me was Domi's line. I was happy to see uh, Tatar put, or excuse me, to see Byron put on that line because Byron looked good tonight too. Anyways, in the first period, <clears throat> not much happening. Neither team's really generating a lot of scoring chances. It's a really flat, stale first period. It's back and forth. Not much to talk about in the first period, except for one play, 12.35 into the first. Uh, they come down. New Jersey comes down. Uh, one of the players lets off a weak wrist shot from the blue line. It looks like Price is just going to glove it, but Shea Weber lets Nathan Bastion stand right in front of Price, put his stick right in front of Price's glove. As it's coming into Price's glove, it tips off Bastion's stick, <coughs> excuse me, folks, and goes under Price's glove. For an easy goal, Weber should have had the body on that. That's the defensive blunder I was talking about. I love Shea Weber, but how he didn't cover this kid, who I believe it was his first game from New Jersey this year, I'm pretty sure is what the commentator said. How he didn't cover this kid on this goal was beyond me. It, was, it wasn't a weak goal by Price by no means, but it was a weak goal by the defense because the defense should have had that. Uh, and Carrick assisted on it, and Yakolov assisted on it. Second period, a lot happening for Montreal. Montreal, I believe... New Jersey only had two shots uh, halfway through the second period. He didn't do much in the second period at all, except for the fact that he scored a goal 306 in the second period. Uh, Curtis scored. Curtis Gabriel scored a goal from Connor Carrick and Rooney. It was a decent goal. Price probably could have had it, but it was off a rebound. But what can you say? Up to nothing. New Jersey capitalizing. I said in my review earlier the keys to the game for New Jersey: get on the board earlier, which they did, and capitalize on their opportunities, which they did, because they did not have many opportunities. They may have generated five scoring chances the whole game, and they scored on two of them. Uh, one of them, Price, there's no goalie that was stopping that. Like, the stick's right in front. The puck is right in front of you. The stick tips it under your glove. No goalie stopping that. Second one he could have had, but whatever, guys. And then the third period, not much happening. Again, Montreal is generating a lot of plays, but they can't do anything with it. The first 10 minutes, it doesn't even look like they're going to have a chance to come back. And then all of a sudden, Paul Byron, 6.30 into the period. Uh, 6.30 in the third period, I mean. Paul Byron comes down. He gets a shorthanded tip. I believe Deneau is in that too, because it says Deneau has an assist on it. He gets a short, uh, Montreal shorthanded. He gets a tip as New Jersey is trying to pass it over on the blue line. He kicks it off his skate. He flies up the ice. It's his typical ball, Paul Byron style, beating the defender and beating the goalie with a beautiful, I believe it was a backhand, but I think he might have got the forehand over to get the wrist shot off. But off of, yeah, I think it was a forehand wrist shot off a beautiful wrist shot. And uh, yeah, Paul Byron scores. Looked like the Habs were going to push after that because after that, I believe shortly after that, they got a power play. It, the power play looked really good, but like I said, they were making too many fancy passes. They should have put the puck on net more. I believe Kaka and Yemi should have shot more. I believe he only had one shot on the power play tonight, and it was a weak shot in front of the net that uh, Schneider stopped easily. So, terrible game for the Habs, terrible loss. With 20 games left, now only 19 games left, they give up a crucial two points that I'm sure Carolina or Pittsburgh are going to win tomorrow night because these East teams have been winning and winning and winning. I'd be shocked if neither one of these teams lost. I believe one of them played tomorrow night and another team plays tomorrow night after. I'm not sure. I know Montreal plays Detroit tomorrow. <clears throat> they cannot afford to lose this game to Detroit tomorrow. With 20 games left and the division this tight, uh, with Carolina, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo slowly creeping up there, you cannot give up four points like that to teams that are lesser than you, that are playoff teams. I don't want to say they're lesser than them, but New Jersey tonight really was. They didn't have their whole team dressed. One of their best players, Miles Wood, went down. He sure took two bad penalties, so he was off the ice for four minutes right there alone. Uh, it's just they should have capitalized. Like they had four power plays. They did nothing with it, absolutely nothing with it. Terrible loss for the Habs. I could absolutely see how every Habs fan would be super disappointed after losing like they did to the Leafs. This is a statement you make. It's it's unacceptable. I am a Habs fan. It, it 
breaks my heart. I hope they do make the playoffs. I hope this is a new trend. I want to see three or four wins in a row because this absolutely kills me. As you can tell, my voice is kind of going because I did quite a bit of cursing at the screen in my house tonight, guys. You probably wouldn't have liked me. But anyways, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for my review tomorrow. I'm going to recap it again. Let's hope the Habs get a big win in Detroit and start trending upwards. They need to ride live three or four in a row. Let's get a bit of space in there. Just one point between Carolina and being tied up with Pittsburgh stuff. Too much anxiety for me as a fan. Anyways, guys, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for viewing. Feel free to leave a comment. Not going to say I hope you enjoyed the game because I'm sure you didn't because I certainly didn't. But have a great night. Have a great day. Enjoy the review tomorrow.